Brian Kleiss, principal with CLA Wealth Advisors, brings his expertise by walking his clients through the financial planning process and is able to give a peace of mind and comprehensive advice that provides his clients with the best long-term odds of financial success while minimizing risk. Brian will take some time to talk about what that looks like. Please welcome Brian Kleist. First off, I want to thank everybody here for taking time out of their day. I know everybody's busy these days with all the workforce challenges that, that everybody's facing that we already talked about. So just taking the time to be here uh, is really, really important. So hopefully you can take a few nuggets from, from each one of us and be able to take that back to your respective organizations to be able to help. A um, little bit about my background here quick before you know, I get going. I'm a principal at uh, CLA. We're one of the largest uh, professional services firms in the country. Right now we work with more small business owners than any other firm, professional services firm in the U.S. and are the largest in the state of Wisconsin. So we definitely have the expertise, not just within my team, but across the firm to be able to, to work with small business owners and really understand the impact of what's going on, not just nationally, but right here in, in the state of Wisconsin. Uh, I've been doing this for about 20 years now. I know I have a younger look. Probably most people think I'm in the millennial generation, but I, I, I made it into Gen X. Uh, work with primarily retirees, uh, as well as former CEOs, business owners, um, individuals, nurses, doctors, engineers, you name it, the full spectrum of, of people. Uh, really helping them figure out you know, how do they get from where they are to where they want to be, taking the least amount of risk possible. A um, little bit of background on CLA, I'm going to go over here first, then I'm going to talk about, you know, things from an economic and a market standpoint and how that, uh, how our views on that is going to impact both industry as well as, you know, the hiring process, and then uh, talk a little bit about the impact on employees. So CLA, our wealth advisory practice, we manage about eight, eight to ten billion dollars in assets under management uh, across the United States, have about 125 individuals. Uh, working within our team. So fairly large, large practice, large organization, um, and we're continuing to grow every single day, every single year. You know, our, our goal is to really personalize solutions for the individuals that we work with. So a lot of people are talking about, you know, retirees and the retirees coming back to the workforce. That's who I work with every single day. And we talk to people that are retiring and I really try and help emphasize with them that it's not about retirement. Retirement, to me, is, is an old word that should be, quite honestly, retired, for lack of a better term. I'd love to be able to talk to people about financial independence. And financial independence, to me, is getting to a point in their life, in their career, where they aren't strapped and tied to a job. And that's where a lot of people are coming now, and that's why you're seeing a lot of the change that we see in, in the demographics of people in that older generation are saying, you know what, I've reached financial independence and now I'm looking for other things. It's not just about the money. I have the money, I have the, the safety or security. I just want to have more flexibility, more time with my grandkids, flexible work schedule, things along those lines. So really working with people on, you know, how do we develop an investment portfolio that meets those goals and objectives in a state plan that gets uh, their, their money uh, to where they want it to go, and then minimizing taxes. You know, some of the things that differentiate CLA uh, on the wealth advisory side, really taking that fiduciary responsibility, working with our clients uh, to be able to put their interests first, uh, providing unbiased advice. And I know a lot of people talk about that, and one of the things that you know, I tell people that differentiates us from others, and the reason I came to work at CLA over other firms, is we're all salary-based employees. There's no commission, there's no bonus structure, so we really do get to sit on the same side of the table as the, the people that we work with, which is fantastic. Another key differentiator uh, for us, especially given that we work with more small business owners, is the integration of tax and wealth advisory. So it's not just about investment management, putting together the perfect investment portfolio or investment strategy. It, that's clearly one component, but it's how do we look at what charitable planning that, that you have for you and your family? How do we you know, set a roadmap up for you to get from where you are to where you want to go from a financial planning standpoint, minimizing taxes and integrating taxes? So taxation, you know, I talk to clients all the time, it's like a spider web that 
really is interwoven in every fiber of your, your financial being. So how do, we impact, how do we work with taxes and integrate that into the overall plan? So looking at things from a market and the economic standpoint, I think is going to give a little bit different perspective uh, relative to the conversation that we've heard here, here today. So hopefully I can provide a little bit of positive message here and you know, some of the opportunities that we have along with some of the challenges. So what are, what are we seeing? So we, we have a national committee right now that looks at things from what I would call a top-down or a global macroeconomic perspective and then a bottom-up perspective. So CLA has you know, 13 to 16 different industry specializations that we work with. So people that specialize within transportation and trucking, retail, um, state and local government, you, know, you name it. So these verticals help give us a unique perspective into the marketplace, not just from a global microeconomic standpoint, but also from a bottom-up uh, microeconomic standpoint. So consumer spending right now is, you know, continues to be robust coming out of the, the pandemic, which is definitely a good thing for employers. We're, we're seeing record profits across, across the board. Uh, so that continues to be strong. We continue to rebound out of the, the pandemic. Ho uh, housing prices you know, continue to hit all-time highs. I think we, we all know and understand what's going on with, with the housing market right now, but this is being curbed by, by some of the next information that I'll put out here is, you know, looking at things like interest rates and, and higher inflation. You know, inflation is a key element that we're continuing to watch and how the Fed is reacting to it with interest rates to be able to curb inflation. And what does that mean for the talent pool that all of you are trying to hire? Inflation means higher energy prices, cost to be able to get to work, cost of groceries, um, cost of rent, cost of mortgages, things along those lines. So being able to balance that uh, is, is really critical for a lot of the people that you're looking to hire. Uh, inflation isn't going away anytime soon. Uh, you know, we're, we're tempering it with, uh, with interest rate hikes right now, and that's really going to um, likely continue here for the short term. But we're hopeful that things will taper if, if we can really get in, uh, inflation under control. Unemployment uh, is something that the other two gentlemen talked about you know, ad nauseum, so I'm not going to, to belabor the point on this. But clearly, unemployment levels are at record lows. <clears throat> you know, I'm not an economist, but one of the things that I took away from you know, my econ classes way back you know, 25 years ago uh, at the University of Wisconsin-Madison was exactly what uh, I believe Jim had mentioned before. You know, being down at three, three and a half percent unemployment is actually full employment. In order to be able to run an economy like we're trying to run here in the U.S., you have to have some measure of unemployment to, to have it be successful. And that's one of the things, one of the roadblocks and challenges that we're running into right now from an economic standpoint. Um, this slide came from our September presentation, so obviously we had the 75 basis point rate hike in, uh, in November, and then we're looking for another rate hike of about 75 basis points here before, before the end of the year. Uh, so uh, after that, we're hoping that you know, between 2023 and 2025, we start to see the, the interest rates taper, and we actually see them come down slightly. Obviously, these are projections, so nobody knows the future, nobody can predict the future, but this is what the data is telling us and what the market's telling us uh, is being priced in. Uh, looking at inflation, where, where is inflation coming from? You know, obviously, higher energy prices, higher food prices, um, as well as items, items across the board. Future expectations, um, you know, we really do see inflation spiking, so you can see on the right, um, you know, north of 5%, probably closer to 8 to 9% right now. Uh, so it's not just energy costs, and the higher interest rates are really going to drive, continue to drive, um, costs up as far as housing costs go. And one of the things that we see from an investment perspective is, you know, right now we're, we're short about two, or two million unit, housing units across the U.S. And we physically can't build them fast enough to be able to account for the shortage. So we're kind of like our population, you know, the 2.1 people that we need to be able to, to add to the, the population to be able to just stay at the status quo, that's what we're doing on the housing side. So coming out of 2008, 2009, the housing market shut down completely. 
and we really haven't had the ability to be able to catch up. So when you see more apartments, more condos being built, more multifamily, you know, that, that's actually a really good thing. We, we need the housing uh, to be able to do that. Unfortunately, you know, with interest rates going up and land, lumber, and labor prices continuing to go up as well, it's making it harder and harder to be able to afford to be able to build affordable housing in this country. So that's another challenge that, that we're looking at and that all the people that work, you know, in this room, you guys are trying to hire, they're, they're facing as well. On the positive side, we're seeing that you know, supply chains are easing coming out, of, uh, coming out of COVID. So they're still at elevated levels, but you know, global shipping rates are, are coming down. And another thing that we're seeing is um, global shipping uh, as far as freight uh, on the seas, as well as uh, trucking uh, tonnage is, is continuing to, to go up. So that's, that's definitely a good thing. So supply chains are starting to ease, which should make it a little bit easier to, to be able to get goods and services. So in the end, what does this mean for employees? So interest rates, I think I touched on it a little bit. Higher interest rates means higher, uh, higher costs for, for mortgages if you're looking to buy or build a home. I mean, has anybody bought or tried to build a home in the last nine months? Right? If we would have asked that question a few years ago, I think we would have had a lot more hands go up. Well, less and less turnover means it's harder and harder to be able to find, find that affordable housing. So um, the cost of, if the cost of a single family home continues to go up for that, that entry level, the same corresponding increases are going to start happening on the rent side because rents are going to continue to go up as well. So that's, that's definitely a challenge. Uh, as far as inflation goes, I think those are all those are tied within lockstep. So, it, you're you're going to have interest rate hikes, which will which will hurt from an inflation standpoint on the on the housing side. But it's going to likely help in the long term when you look at cost of goods and things along those lines coming coming down or at least flattening out. As far as retirees, and this isn't this isn't in my slides here, my prepared remarks today, but. Um, just having worked with more and more retirees, you know, what we tell them is, you know, those, those last few years of, of your, or those first few years of retirement are really critical to, to your success or failure as far as the planning work that, that we do. So there's an inflection point where you go from the, what we call the accumulation phase to the decumulation phase in financial planning. And that's the point where you're at your most risk. So if you think about it, you've saved your entire life, you get to that point, you have the most assets that you've ever had, and then you're gonna turn that spigot on to be able to start spending. Well, if the market goes down 20% like it did this year, and then you take out your first $50,000 to be able to spend and live off of, well, you have that much less for the market to be able to rebound and help you when things come out of it in 2023 or 2024. So what does that mean for retirees is during a market like this, they're likely looking for opportunities to be able to come back to work. So if you can make something that's attractive for them, that is the key point. It's gonna, for them to be able to add one or two more years of, of work is going to exponentially impact their likelihood of success in retirement. And we can provide that, that greater stability for them if they have the opportunity to be able to come back to work and earn some type of an income. You know, maybe they're not tied to a nine to five job that you know, is paying them their $100,000 a year, $150,000 a year that they were used to when they were 60 years old, 65 years old, but now they're able to come back and work 20 hours a week or 30 hours a week and still have the flexibility to be able to live what they the life that they want to live, but still earn an income. What does that do? That creates a win-win for you as well as as well as them. So, I'm typically you know the type of person I like an interactive conversation you know during presentations like this. So, I'll save time at the end for for questions. Um, but thank you all for your time.